Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm actually doing one of my favorite videos to make, and that's just answering your guys' question. So, special shout out to Tom B for asking this awesome question. I'm going to share it right here. And basically he asks about APIs and charting. So, obviously APIs are super important in the world of computer science, and I thought it'd be cool to actually answer this question by building out an example app. So in this two-part series, we're going to be building out the Yahoo Finance app, or at least the skeleton of it. And in part one, I'm going to explain what an API is, exactly what it is, and how we're going to get real-time stock data to use in our application. In part two, we're going to take that data and chart it on the application end. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get updated as soon as I publish part two, and let's so get you, started. You'll see we have a nice little API example. And something you guys will learn is that we will use APIs whenever we need data or another service that we don't have on our end. So in this example, um, we're building out an application that returns the closest landmark based on a latitude and longitude. All right. So for example, if with my phone, I plug in these two coordinates, I get returned this Victoria Island Hotel, right? So let's say, for example, we're building out the actual application or the developers. So there's a couple ways we can go about this. We could go and chart the entire world and figure out the coordinates of each single landmark and then put it into our own database. Or we can just use the data that someone else has already made. In this example, there's this company called Gecko, which has a landmarks database right for us. So we can use that. In real life, Google Maps, Yelp, all these big companies share their data with developers through APIs. So again, whenever you're going to use data or a service from another company or third party, we're probably going to use some sort of API. All right, so in this example, this is where the API is actually getting called. We're passing in the coordinates to the API. The API then goes into the database and gives us the data we want. Okay. So why do we even need an API? Obviously, with all this data, they can't just let anyone do whatever they want with it, right? Like, there has to be some sort of security in place, some sort of authentication, and that's where the API comes into, into play. So most of the time, when you, when you use an API, you'll be given an API key that's unique to you. And this is how the company will know how many times You've been calling their database or requesting information, and they could use this to later charge if they if they if you've been using it too much. So APIs on the company end are a great way for de um, get developers to develop on your platform and also to make money. So with that in mind, let's get started onto the actual problem. I'm going to navigate to this website right here, and I'll link this down in the description. Basically, Quandle is basically going to be the API we're going to be using in our application. And this will give us real-time stock data. So we're going to scroll down, and you'll see this link that says get an API key. So make sure you click that. I'm going to also give my API key here, just an example. So if you guys don't want to create an account or anything like that, you can just use this one. Um, it is free, so if you are going to build an application, I, I highly recommend you get your own API key. Basically, we get an API key. It's going to ask you for your email, straightforward stuff. So click that. And once we have that, let's do a quick example. So we're going to copy this link and just paste it into an empty page. And then we're going to copy our API key right here and then paste that where it says your API key. So what's exactly happening here? With this URL, we're sending an HTTP request to, to Quandle's database or API, and then we're also giving them our API key. So ideal situation is that we get some sort of data back. So I'm gonna click enter and see what happens. It's going, and then you see it downloads this .csv file. I'm going to open this up just to show you guys what we get. Let's give that a little second. Awesome. So there you see we have for the stock Apple, we see 
real-time stock data based on different dates and their high lows, volume, all this group, all this data. So now that we have that, we're gonna we're gonna see how we can translate that to Swift. So I'm at the Xcode new project screen. We're gonna be creating a single view application. Click next. I'm gonna call mine Yahoo Stocks. Click next. Save it to our desktop is fine. Create. Cool. And so a very simple UI to start off with, just so you guys get the overall concept. I'm just gonna drag on a button. And basically, every time the user presses the button, we'll get that stock data. So let's just drag on a new object onto the storyboard. Change the label real quick. Get stock data. Cool. Center that. And now let's actually create create the IB action function in the code. So let's navigate to the view controller.swift. Click that. We're gonna say at IB action func button pressed. It off. So basically every single time that button is pressed, we'll execute this. And so what do we need? What we actually need to start off with is the URL we used previously. So var URL, that's going to be a string equal to this, this right here. So I'm going to copy this, paste that in there, and then make sure you actually replace this your API key with the actual key. So make sure you paste in a valid API key or this won't work. So I'm going to paste mine in here. Just like that. Make sure there's no space. Cool. So now that we have that, we're going to create a new URL session. And so we're going to say URL session dot share dot data task with URL. And we're going to say ns url. We're going to pass in a string, which is going to be our URL. And then we're going to force that, force cast that to a URL. And then we're going to say data response error. And turn. So what we're looking for here is we're going to pass in the URL to this URL session and hopefully get back some data, a response object, and or an error. So just to show you guys what that looks like, I'm going to say print, this is the data, print, this is print out the data. I'm going to add a nice little divider so you can tell the difference. Print this response. Response. Cool. And now before I forget, let's navigate back to storyboard and actually connect our button to our IB action function. So I'm going to control drag from here, let go, and then select touch up inside. So that's good. If we go back in here, we should see that's now connected. So let's run this and see what we get. Always a good sign. Cool. So I'm going to click get stock data and give it a sec. Oh, sorry. So to make this work, we have to go back in here and add dot resume, just like that. So let's run that again. So we're going to click get stock data, give it a sec, and then we should see some print statements, which is nice. So let's scroll up. We see this is the data, but instead of the data, we see that they just give us the size. We'll get to that later. And then we see this response object. So in the response object, we get some more information about the request and, and the response. So here we get a status code 200, which is, which is a success code. And we get all this other information. So what we actually care about is this, is this data, right? Because that's what we're actually looking for. So to actually get to that, let's first delete this .csv because we don't really want that. We just want the data. So I'm going to delete .csv in our URL, keeping the 
question mark. So just to show you guys what that looks like, I'm going to copy this new URL and paste it in here. And so if you guys remember, last time we did this, we automatically downloaded a CSV file. This time, because we deleted that, we get the information straight to the web page. And that's what we're looking for. Okay? So make sure you delete that. So this is the new URL. And then in this print statement, we just got to say string and then pass in the data encoding string dot encoding dot utf8 for formatting and then we're going to force cast that as a string cool. so let's run that Get stock data. And there you guys see we have all this all this nice data being printed to the screen.